Good evening and welcome to Tuesday Evening Prayer. I nearly said Wednesday, but it's Tuesday, <clears throat> because each day is more or less the same here, <clears throat> except Sunday. But it's good to welcome our dear sister Linda on our live stream prayer channel. And those who've not logged in, you're welcome. And it's wonderful to welcome our dear sister Mary <clears throat> from dear old Michigan. Brother Cadge and Brother Carl and Kathleen. And good to welcome Krista. Good to welcome you all to this time of just being still and just reawakening our heart to love, to God's love. <clears throat> so this evening, I light this light and I hold each one of you here. And in particular, I hold our dear sister Magdalena and her dear friend Marceline, an elderly lady who lives with her in Belgium and who's afraid to put her heat on because of the cost and is living in the cold. But we pray also for Brother Matthew and for the members of our community who are hurting, unwell, may be disheartened or discouraged. But we also remember the whole family of God who too need our prayer this evening. <clears throat> so this evening we begin with our evening prologue of our brother and sister Essenes the Therapeutiocenes, the therapists who lived before Christ by Mount Sinai. They were hermits of the Judaic tradition who lived a very strict, simple hermetic life and who gave us the wonderful affirmations to reprogram the head and bring you back to the heart. Sorry, I'm losing my voice again. <clears throat> we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly father mother god the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect <clears throat> tuesday evening we commune with the angel of power saying Angel of power, descend upon my acting body and direct all my acts. As you say this, you contemplate the stars, their radiations and the cosmic ocean of life. <clears throat> and you begin to experience the cosmovital forces from the stars being absorbed by the nervous system of the acting body. And now we ring our Tibetan bells for unity and peace in the Cathedral of God, the landscape. <clears throat> and our first prayer this evening, oh, I meant to say I remember Sister Sandra, who also has been unwell. So our opening prayer from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. As I utter these prayers from my mouth, O God, in my soul may I feel your presence. The knee that is stiff, O healer, may pliant. The heart that is hard, make warm beneath your wing. The wound that is giving me pain, O best of healers, make whole, and may my hopes and my fears find a listening place with you. And coming to the little book of favourite prayers from ordinary people, we read <clears throat> from Mary Taylor, a patient at St Thomas's Hospital in London. Gracious and holy Father, Mother God, 
give us wisdom to perceive you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, hearts to meditate upon you, <clears throat> and life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now for our hymn from our Unitarian brothers and sisters. <clears throat> And the hymn is interesting for all of us. It's hymn number four. All that is abundant living. All that is abundant living. All that is the world's delight. All that is our costly giving. All the world's transforming light. All the darkness and the shadow. All the depth of soil and earth all the sleepers in the hedgerow, all that waits to come to birth, all that's doubtful and uncertain, all that may not be quite true, all that hides behind the curtain, all that's unsure what to do. These with care we hold and handle, these we gently put in place, these we keep from vice and scandal. These we bless in every case <clears throat> by Andrew McEwen Hill. I do apologize about my throat. Ah, oh, well, praise the Lord. So now our reading from Meditations Now, a reflection for today <clears throat> by the Reverend Leslie Brandt. And he draws us to St. Matthew's Gospel in the New Testament Bible, to Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12. But he asks us to reflect on verse 12. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Let's read that again. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Mahatma Gandhi praised it. Natisha cursed it. Many people sentimentalize over it. Most of us ju just bow politely to its beautiful thoughts and respectfully put it into cold storage. But always it leaps to life again to provoke and disturb us. And well it should, for it is the Sermon of the Mount, a collection of Jesus's most profound and best remembered words. For non-Christians, this sermon is a frustrating, impossible sort of thing, a picture of life totally contrary to everything that is human in our kind of world. Yet even they wistfully return to it half persuaded that somewhere in its hundred odd verses is the cure for human ills. For the Christian, it is something else again. It is designed to be his or her style of life, not something attained or accomplished, but something to reach for, to aim at, to become the goal of Christian living. The Sermon on the Mount does not lead to salvation except to drive a person to the need for God's grace. It is something which, by that grace, ought increasingly to come out of an authentic Christian. It ought to be the portrait of a saint and to result in the kind of life that will communicate God's healing and power to the lives of the sick, the lonely, the oppressed, the broken, unhappy people in our world 
and in our community about us. This sermon is meant to be a sort of agenda and guide for our daily activities. It won't win us God's favor. That has already been bestowed upon us through Jesus and his cross. It is, however, the lifestyle of the family of God, a lifestyle we are empowered and expected to grow into as the adopted members of that family. And there's a beautiful prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, so many of your pronouncements and proclamations that were remembered and passed on by your disciples and difficult to understand and virtually impossible to carry out. Grant, O oh God, the grace and strength that are essential in order to live out your compassion and serve as your disciple in my home, my place of work, and wherever I am. Amen. Now isn't that a powerful prayer? So lifestyle of a Christian. Wow. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. My spiritual director is a convert, as are all the 23 sisters who are enclosed poor Clare nuns, followers of Francis and St. Clare, in their beautiful monastery here in the UK. And I remember seeing my dear, my dear director, Sister Agatha, who's now become a hermit, and as we're talking behind the grill, because she's behind a big grill, she said to me, Sean, if you only touch one heart, one soul for God, you will achieve the hundredfold. And the angels of heaven will rejoice. So all you have to do is Bring one, the smile, the laughter, and the love of Christ to their life. So if you only touch one, yours is the kingdom of heaven. How about that? It's achievable with God's help. We can't do it on our own because we're, we're not strong enough. And because very often we blow hot and cold. One minute we're fine, next minute we're not fine. One minute we're up, then we're down. So sometimes we don't know whether we're coming or going. Or as we used to say in the monastery, we don't know whether we're Arthur or Martha. There you have it. <clears throat> so let us be still as we come into the presence of God. Let's just listen to our heart. The temple of the Holy Spirit. And sense the love of the beloved calling you to come and to listen not with your ear, but with your heart. To come like a little child. To come with their innocence and to be willing to listen. Well, let us do that now, because there are so many people to pray for this evening, for when we went live, we promised Sister Magdalena that we would remember her and her dear elderly friend, Marceline, who's afraid to put her heat on because of the fear of the high costs of heating an old property. So we've many to remember this evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I'm going to play this for us. Oh, excuse me. And it's Yahweh is the God of my salvation by an amazing lady called Marilla Ness. Dear friends, let us come before the Cosmic Christ. Let us have courage and that inner knowing that when we open our heart to the God of many names and none, God is present. For Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I will 
do it for you. So I come before you in service as you are to the one who is, to the one who is love, and to the one who's calling you here to open your heart and to hear that gentle voice, the voice of the beloved, speak to you. What is he saying to you? Can you hear him? Or is your mind full of clutter? Or are those negative voices raping your soul again, leaving you wounded and fractured, discouraged and afraid? It takes courage. It takes courage to walk this spiritual path but it also takes strength and discipline, prayer and fasting. And the more you're willing to invest of you, yourself, the more interest you make in spiritual dividends from your God. Trust me, Whatever you put out into the universe, if it is good or bad, positive or negative, it will always come back to you. But if you're putting out a request to God, the angels of the Lord God hear you and they bring your request, your guardian angel who's with you 24-7, brings your request to God. But do you believe that? Or is that a child's story? Well, I believe it and I'm nearly 70. Let us now pray for each other. But first, let us pray some peace prayers by the Reverend Roger Granger. And the section is on the divided. From Psalm 88, verse 18, you have taken my companions and loved ones from me, from the Buddhist tradition. May all beings be happy at their ease, free from pain, fear, distress, or enmity, untroubled, well, unharmed, in peace. In Psalm 3, verse 2, we remember the abandoned. Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. And from the Sikh tradition, a place in God's court can only be attained if we do service to others in the world. And from the Zoroastrian belief, we pray for the victims of war, we pray for refugees and people made homeless. We pray for those who've been physically or mentally wounded or disabled. We pray for every kind of social outcast. We pray for the despised, the rejected, the blamed by others and themselves. And from the Baha'i, thou art the bountiful, and all loving. So may I be a haven for the distressed, an upholder and defender for the victims of oppression, a home for the stranger, a balm to the sufferer, a tower to the fugitive. And may our community here be a place of welcome where we are all equal and that we are all loved. No matter how far we may have sunk in our life, no matter whatever crimes we may have committed against ourselves or others, we are loved. We are loved. So I want to bring each one of you now, because behind me you'll see two candles burning in the center behind that beautiful cloth is the Blessed Sacrament. 
I want to bring this Christ that I love, that's taken me nearly 60 years to find. Because I always believed that God was a fearful God, a God who'd punish you, and I was afraid to come to him because of an abusive father, a my birth father, who was violent and abusive. So I had that unnatural, unhealthy fear but it took a breakdown for me to have a breakthrough to see my father, mother, God as loving, as caring and compassionate. So I want to bring their son to you so that he will touch you now. Let us be still. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and breathe in the breath of God's love for you. And if anything is troubling you, be not afraid, said Jesus, for I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. So name whatever it is, bless it, because it's yours. And now a big breath and give it to God and leave it with God. And in that mindset of gratitude and love, just keep praising God till that request comes. And as night follows day, it will come because no prayer goes unanswered before God. Relax now. Relax and be at peace and just feel the love of your God, a God who has many names, not only Christian, Judaic and Islamic, but God has many names and none. And we are all the children of that one true loving God. So come. Let him touch you and free you to reclaim your divinity as a child of God. Relax. I am the light. I am the way. I am your truth, says the Lord. He who comes to me will never be weary or overburdened, for I will refresh him. I will give to him eternal life. You are my beloved. Come, come, receive the gifts that Jesus has prepared for you and they're free. But we bring to this table the many who have asked for prayer and we shall list a few. Our dear sister Sue's friend, Kath, and she's saying that Kath is home now <clears throat> from hospital. They opened her up and found more cancer. They closed her back up again, so more chemo. Well, let's send love to Kath. Let's send love to our sister Sue and Linda, who are here with us. And let us also remember here, Sister Anastasia's husband, Al, who had a, an important scan this morning because he too had cancer. Sister Jan's family, dear brother Matthew, Sister Celine and her sister Veronica in Normandy in France. Sister Amir in Northern Ireland and her dear friend Myra and her son Yuan. For brother Kaj and sister Paula's son Lucas. And for their friend Christian mourning the loss of his beloved wife. For dear mother Olivia. For Eva and her son Jason. For Fran and Annabelle here in Cumbria, 
for a desk and her son, for dear Magdalena and her friend Marceline, and now for each one of you, for our dear, 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 dear Mary, Sister Mary, for Brother Carl and Kathleen, for Krista and her family, for Gary, for Loida Rodriguez, for Ray, for Sohail Christopher, for Marvain, for Brother Bjorn. Welcome, dear brother, and for your community. For Martin Lloyd, good evening, dear brother, for Dave, for our dear brother Chris, joining us on Easter Sunday. Blessings, dear Chris, for dear Sandra, for Grace, and for dear Rita, and pray you're feeling stronger. For Peter, for Antonio Harry, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He comes to us through many ways. Nature's where he comes to me, and a friend, an animal, and a smile. Forgive me. <clears throat> for Yolanthe, Monique, welcome, dear friend. But we bring also the whole family of God. We bring the Rohingya refugees in Pakistan and Bangladesh. We bring the Syrian refugees and especially those on the Greek island of Lesbos, where they're being treated like animals, denied proper food and clothing. We bring all our religious leaders, many of whom are aloof to the cries of God's children, because they're nicely comfortable in their big ornate monasteries. And many have lost touch with the cries of the poor and the marginalized. But we come here as their representatives and we say to them, we will walk with you. We will be your prayer partner. And we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat Hanh. We also pray for our monarch, Queen Elizabeth, and head of the, she's head of the Anglican Church worldwide. But we pray for all the men and women of different beliefs who heard the call of God to give their life for the children of God who have many beliefs. But we pray for those in service who are weary, unwell, struggling with illness and infirmity. Let us send them love as we now form a circle of light in this beautiful cathedral of God on the airways and visualize the light of our loving God. Touch each and every one of us and all whom we have prayed for here. Amen. So let us be still now. Let us be still. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer by listening to a great Buddhist Tom Kenyon as he chants the Lord's Prayer. My gift to you. Oh, 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 oh. 
And now, dear friends, we come to the end of our evening prayer. <clears throat> and I share with you a Celtic blessing from Iona. The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this day and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon, and the gifts of the animal kingdom. Be in your heart, now and forevermore. Amen. And as I come to blow out this light, let us take the words of the Christ to our heart. When you are troubled, call on me, and I will be there for you. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve this amazing God who has many names and none. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace from the King of Peace 
from the Queen of Peace to you, God's ambassadors for peace. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your time and your prayer for all gathered here and all God's children. I take my hat off to you if I had one. God bless you. God bless. Amen.